Hello everyone, I am here with another very special countdown. Today I will be going over my top 16 favorites for the Mario Kart 7 Retro Grand Prix tracks. This list was so hard to make because some of the retro tracks I chose were one of the best tracks from the Mario Kart games, and I had a hard time choosing my 16 favorites, so give me credits, please. Please remember that this is my opinion that I will rate these tracks by its design, details, difficulty, and music. Because this top 16 is focused on the retro tracks, Nitro tracks will not be in this countdown. So without further ado, let's get on this list. <laughs> yeah, this track. N64 Luigi Raceway isn't really a fun course at all, and it, it, it just... Ugh. Anyways, there is nothing really much to say about this track, except for some things. The design is just an 8. The only surprising details were just the tunnel and the hot air balloons that can give you items. But in the original, it gave you blue shells. I still have no idea why Nintendo changed that detail. Anyways, the difficulty is self-explanatory. And the music is a little catchy, but it's still a little basic at the same time. This track seriously deserves to be on the number 16 spot on my list. And surprisingly enough, it's much better than Cheap Cheap Lagoon. Seriously? This is the retro Bowser's ca <coughs> Bowser Castle we got? GBA Bowser Castle 1 is just one of the worst, if not, Bowser's Castle in the entire series. The only cool thing is just the thwomps, but that is, like I said before, the only cool thing. The design has a bit too many turns, but the road pattern is very good, I must say. The difficulty is a little easy, but the thwomps can make it a challenge, and the music is just like any Bowser Castle soundtrack. This track is pretty much boring, and, and it deserves the number 15 spot on my list. Like I said in my top 16 Mario Kart 7 Nitro Tracks video, I stated that I HATED most of the ice tracks in the Mario Kart series, but they are gorgeous. But the gorgeous part is not the case on DSDK Pass, because it's just a snow mountain. Nothing gorgeous about that, is there? There is this one cool part about this track, though, and it is the fact that there is an item box on top of a snow pile near a, a huge curve, and it can give you either a triple mushroom or a star. The track is so twisty because there are so many turns you have to take. The track feels barren, the snow boulders, snowmen, and the slippery road can make this a challenge. And the music kind of fits in. This, this track is indeed a little boring and it deserves the number 14 spot on my list. This track stole some of the stuff from the SNES Koopa Beach tracks, but this track is still good as it is. N64 Koopa Troopa Beach, or N64 Koopa Beach if you prefer, has a pretty good atmosphere for a beach track, and it made a lot of sense to bring it back in Mario Kart 7. The design is a little plain and modern, but its feel of a real life beach just takes my mind off of it. The track is a little barren, but then again, the track takes my mind off of it. The crabs in the water and on the sand can make this a challenge, but it's pretty easy to dodge them at times. The music makes a lot of sense because it has a tropical feel, and N64 Koopa Troopa Beach is on a tropical island. This track is an okay track, and it will stay okay for many generations to come. Do you guys remember playing Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube? Well now you can experience it again, but on the Mario Kart track. DS Luigi's Mansion is a pretty good track because it has the same exact feel from the Luigi's Mansion game on the GameCube. I think Nintendo brought this back so that they can support Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for the 3DS. The only obstacle on this track are the trees. They could have put ghosts to steal items for a change, but trees? I have no idea, but it's a strange idea. 
Anyways, the track is a little twisty, so I go onto the off-road at times. The music is self-explanatory since it's a ghost track and it's based off of Luigi's Mansion. This is a good track, and it deserves the number 12 spot on my list. I honestly find N64 Calamari Desert to be better than Shy Guy Bazaar, but this track is a good desert track. The trains can be a pain at times because they either get in your way or just crash right into you and you will flip out of control. A little off topic, I find this to be a little bit funny because when I'm racing on the Grand Prix, I see computers wait for the train to pass and rarely the train will go away and I just zoom right past the computers that are waiting. <laughs> it's just really funny to do. <laughs> Anyways, moving on, the design is in a loop, but I just love it. I, I love the feel of the track. It, the music is pretty good, and it is indeed catchy at times. This track is a good desert track overall, and it's still better than Shy Guy Bazaar. Like I said before, some of the retro tracks they chose were one of the best ones from any Mario Kart game, and it was hard to place them. Wii Coconut Mall was one of those tracks, and I had a hard time putting it on a spot on my list, so I decided that it deserved a number 10 spot. Here's why. This track is unique overall, on my opinion, because you drive inside a mall. And not only that, but there are Piantas and Mies on his track cheering you on as you race. The design is self-explanatory because it lives up to its name, and it's in a mall. But it's a little twisty. The music really fits in because it's a mall. This track is a really fun course, and it will always stay fun. Okay guys, go ahead and yell at me for putting SNES Mario Circuit 2 on the number 9 spot. But I have one statement. It's my opinion, so I don't really care about what you say about it. Anyways, this track is so fun to race on because there is a huge gliding section that definitely lives up to the original because you're just jumping to the end of the track. The track is a little twisty, but I can still stay on the road. The music is so fantastic because it keeps the SNES style music and it literally fits into the track. I enjoyed this track and it deserves the number 9 spot on my list. How did Princess Daisy get a huge cruise? I don't know, but it is a terrific concept for a track. Most of the tracks take place on land, right? But on GCN Daisy Cruiser, you drive on a boat in the middle of the ocean. And the cool thing is, there is a huge dining hall, and there are tables that slide from one side to the other with the swaying of the ship. But that's not all, folks, because there is a hidden aquarium with me spectating on one side. So freaking cool! This track is totally fantastic, but it wasn't the best retro track on my list. There are seven tracks yet to be better. Wii Mushroom Gorge is so unique because it really does live up to its name. You just drive in a gorge and bounce on mushrooms. That's all. It's simple, but it could be difficult going on to the mushrooms because there is a slight chance that you will fall off into the abyss. The design is a bit twisty, and I think that makes the most sense so it can add up to the challenge of the track, and I kinda like it that way. The music really fits in a lot. So, basically, overall, this track is one of the best Wii tracks on Mario Kart Wii. But not the number one best. There are six tracks that are better. This track was great on Mario Kart DS, but it feels a bit worse on Mario Kart 7. But it's still a really good track, nonetheless. DS Waluigi Pinball is an extraordinary track idea because you race inside a pinball machine. 
There are even pinballs that go along with the track as well. The music... Oh man, the music will drill a huge hole in your head because it is one of the catchiest music soundtracks I have ever heard in the entire Mario Kart series. This track is one of the best DS tracks and I think it deserves this spot on my list. But there are five tracks better than DS Waluigi Pinball. This track is a really epic idea because not only are you driving in a jungle, but you're driving in a jungle with dinosaurs. So freaking awesome. GCN Dino Dino Jungle is really great because it's not based on Yoshi. Yeah, you hear that? Yoshi's a dinosaur. <clears throat> My favorite part is the one bridge part because there are several paths you can take. Just like Yoshi Valley from Mario Kart 64. This track will be one of the most epic tracks in Mario Kart history for generations to come. Good lord Nintendo, you just blew me right away when I first raced on DS Airship Fortress on Mario Kart DS. Even though Mario Kart DS is my least favorite of the Mario Kart franchise, but now, it's on Mario Kart 7. That's right, one of the best tracks from the DS version is now on the 3DS, and it's still a fun track. Nothing really changed from the original except for the graphical overhaul, the gliding section, and the fact that there are now bonsai bells instead of just regular bullet bells, but they're easier to dodge than the original. The best part is, obviously, the airship, because you drive on the upper and lower decks. The tower is really great too, and the music is so catchy, and it really fits in. It almost sounds a bit like the music from the GameCube's Bowser Castle. Do I really have to go on? Wii Koopa Cape isn't just a good track. It's a hell of a fun time, because you are just racing on a track that's just like a water park. And you are just racing on a water slide. This has the same exact feel as Piranha Plant Slide. That's another thing, the water slide part thing I don't know, but it is cool. After the water flow, you then go inside a pipe which leads into the underwater section. In the original, there was another water flow with a bunch of electrical sticks that can shrink you. My god, I hate that. But in this version, the track is underwater and the sticks have been replaced with cheap cheeps. That's a whole lot better. <clears throat> The only flaw is that the water flow sometimes gets me into the off-road sections. But, other than that, this track is totally perfect. Oh man, let me just start off on how excellent Wii Maple Treeway looks on Mario Kart 7 for the 3DS. Totally amazing! There are autumn leaves on the trees, giant wigglers, and so much more. This track looks totally beautiful in my opinion. The music is totally perfect and it really fits in and the atmosphere gives you goosebumps. But best of all, you drive in a tree. A maple tree. Also, there are piles of leaves on the ground that can give you either coins, items, like mushrooms or bananas. Do I really have to go on? No. I really hate to be this guy. I really do. But I just cannot help it. Number one on my top 16 Mario Kart 7 Retro Grand Prix track is none other than SNES Rainbow Road. The everything on this track is amazing. Just everything is amazing. The track is amazing. The rainbow patterns on the road are amazing. The block style tiles on the road are a cool thing that Nintendo did for SNES Rainbow Road. The graphical overhaul is excellent. I love looking at the stars in the background. The swamps and the no guardrail rule make this track a challenge. And I like it. The music. Oh man, the music is fantastic because it sounded like just like it did on the Super Nintendo. 
This track will stay fantastic no matter what happens. That's all the time I had for today. What are your favorite Mark Hurt 7 Retro Grand Prix tracks? Share your opinion to me or to the public by commenting below. If you want more countdowns, then subscribe. I would also really appreciate it if you gave this video a like to support the series. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more. I'm Vincent Weir, signing off. Peace out. Bye.